At Manila, Nimitz conferred with MacArthur on the work yet to be done. The concentrated naval and ground forces of the Allies were preparing for the final assault on the Japanese home islands. From long experience, both Nimitz and MacArthur expected that the Japanese would fight until driven into the sea. But the Japanese did not. With their military and naval might smashed beyond recovery, with their cities bombed to rubble, the enemy surrendered unconditionally. For Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz, it was a solemn moment, a moment of grave reflection. Upon his return, a jubilant nation greeted him. A day was named in his honor, and the whole city of Washington turned out to say thanks. Crowds jammed the streets to get a glimpse of the man who had done so much to bring them victory. At the Capitol building, he went before a special joint session of Congress where he expressed his feelings to the assembled lawmakers. I am sensible of the fact that I do not come here as an individual, and I acknowledge at the outset that I am here only as a representative of the brave men who fought under my command in the Pacific. Some of them are here with me today. I pray that no future war may ever again find us unprepared. Most of all, I pray that such a war does not begin and end to our disadvantage before we can even begin to fight. This need not happen to us. It will not happen to us if we exercise our intelligence, our vigilance, and use our good, plain common sense and keep our fighting forces ready. The Admiral's welcome had its lighter side when he smoked the pipe of peace before beginning his new role as America's post-war chief of naval operations. From Admiral Richard Byrd, the new chief received a briefing on the 1946 Navy expedition to the South Pole. One of the many honorary degrees he received was awarded in a colorful ceremony with other naval and military figures at Columbia University in 1947. After his tour as Chief of Naval Operations ended in 1948, Nimitz accepted a United Nations appointment as plebiscite administrator for Kashmir. Few of Nimitz's experiences with the United Nations yielded more pleasure than a visit from members of the Japanese Diet. Our one-time enemy had become our friend, and the man who had been instrumental in their defeat joined in welcoming them to the community of free nations. In 1951, Nimitz was still not ready to relax. After he resigned his United Nations post, President Truman appointed him chairman of a special commission on internal security. In the Berkeley Hills, not far from San Francisco, Nimitz lives quietly with his wife, but he continues to be active in naval affairs by serving as a special assistant to the Secretary of the Navy. A weather vane with five stars and a submarine replica are all that mark the Admiral's quarters. There is still much to keep him busy, and for the first time in many years, he also finds an opportunity to enjoy his garden. Nimitz is still bound to the sea and to the great American naval tradition. His contribution in strategy and leadership will be long remembered in the Navy, and his personal example admired by all men who follow the sea.
The Big Picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.